Well, I really feel like a big weight has lifted because the basement work we had to have done got finalized this week. We laid some of the concrete. We've done some of the fun things in the front, which means that we're almost ready to start on the actual gardening part. And I'm doing some indoor gardening too. Oh my goodness, so much going on, Stuart. We're gonna take a visit to the greenhouse where all my little darlings have been stored over the winter. I'm gonna bring some selective special ones back we're gonna make some flower arrangements I'm gonna show you some really inexpensive fun little touches of graciousness I think that we can all execute very easily and then I'm gonna show you my patio that is finished in the front I'm ready to start doing some entertaining and I guess Stuart we should get ready to get this show on the road let's do it, let's do it. but I think this explosion of pink and green is really beautiful and it screams spring. If you have watched this channel for any length of time, you know that one luxury I never deny myself is that of having fresh flowers in my home every week, either from my garden or if I have to purchase them. I would go without food before I think I would go without fresh flowers. Last week, I did that St. Patrick's Day inspired mm -hmm. arrangement that had those beautiful limey green carnations in them, which are still basically going strong. It had some bicolored hydrangeas, some mums that had kind of a, oh, kind of an, an ashes of roses color tint to them. The, the arrangement I think was really, really beautiful. And I asked a question of the week that is one of my, my favorite category of responses I've ever gotten. And that was, what is one common flower that you think is underused that you typically can buy at your florist or at your grocery store that is inexpensive, but that is beautiful, especially in moss. And my example for last week was these were these gorgeous carnations. But so many of you responded with that perennial favorite called Ostromeria. Now this is one that in my zone 7B garden I can't grow, but it is everywhere in grocery stores, in florists, just about wherever you buy your cut flowers. And I, I, for some reason, I don't know why, I did not think about using it in moss as you all suggested. So you were my muse for this week Happily, they also had it. Sometimes I'm not always thrilled with the colors that it comes in. But this week at Trader Joe's, they had these gorgeous, look at that, isn't that just beautiful? Looks like it's painted on there. This dark ballerina pink with these wonderful striations of green. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And I just love the way that looked. And then I got even more enthusiastic when I saw these beautiful ranunculas. And they actually were in very, very good form and they looked very fresh. Typically, it's, it's a flower I don't buy a whole lot of because I haven't found in my experience that they're that long lasting in the vase. But this color echo between the um, Ostromeria and the Ranunculus was just so spectacular I couldn't de deny myself. They, and also, like I say, they had these beautiful pink ones that I don't see quite often in the grocery store. And that's my question of the day. Do you often, do you often find that the colors of Ostromeria in the grocery stores are kind of meh? or do you like them? And then since it was so successful, I got such great response with what is another common flower that you think uh, its elegance can be upgraded in the way you style it, please give me another suggestion and maybe I, that will be my muse for next week. So I bought masses of these bouquets of $4.99 ranunculas, maybe they were even $3.99, I can't remember. I think I bought four bunches Bunches. I bought one bunch of the ranunculus. Those were $6.99. And then I just loved this filler. Now this composition actually 
is something that I saw a version of years ago in a magazine. It's It's been in my tear sheet file for quite a while. I couldn't find it again to consult it, but nevertheless, it was so embedded in my mind that I was able to recreate it pretty well, I think. And I'm not sure what this filler is. The filler was $2.99. I got two bunches of it, but I think the whole effect is very, very early spring, especially because I positioned it or I, I composed it rather inside this segment of bark or a segment of, of trunk that still had all of its bark outline on it. And I just loved it. And Stuart, right here, right mm -hmm. here is where we need to put up that link to how you can make a bark covered vase. I did this as a project for Southern Living around Christmas time one year. Mm -hmm. It was one of our more popular segments and it's a way that you can get this look if you don't have a segment of tree trunk that you can style this way. Now this segment is hollow and I just put a leftover plastic container in there to make it waterproof. Likewise, this tiny one also is just a segment of trunk and I put a shorter, I believe it was a pint size container in here. I, in this one, I pretty much stuck to the Ostromeria and the Ranunculas and the greenery, but in here, still going strong, are some of those chartreuse colored carnations that I think are ever so sweet in here. I just recut them again, added more of that filler, and then also some brackets of the uh, Arborvita that I cut from my own yard. And I think the effect is really very early spring. Do you, Stuart? It looks good. Yes. I'm very, very pleased. I think it's very feminine and I think it will last a long time. If the ranunculus don't last, I can just pull them out and the Ostromeria, as you have noted, will continue to beautify this corner of my island for a very, very long time. Pretty soon, I'm going to be using these arrangements and some other entertaining tips that I have in store for you on my new patio, which we are going to show you is now complete. Granted, there's no gardens around it, but it is now complete. And towards the end of the show, I'm going to show you how it turned out. Yes, I forgot I even had that. Well, Stuart, today we are at a friend's greenhouse where so many, too many, of my potted plants from the other house have come here to overwinter. And I wanted to visit today for a couple of reasons. I'm going to bring a few things home with me to take back for indoor, the inside the cottage. And we're going to have to work fast because if not, we're both going to melt. Yeah, it's a hot summer day. Anyway. Yeah, Susu, uh, Stuart's mom is here too. And it may be chilly outside, but boy, is it stuffy. It is definitely in, a hot in summer day. In here. So what I want to do is kind of take an inventory because I always forget what I have in storage of what plants I have. Because I want to, as I said, I want to use some of them inside the cottage. But more importantly, I want to see what I have as I start thinking about where they may be staged outside in the overall garden design, both in the front and the back, and kind of get an idea in my head of where they'll be positioned. Now, I'm always overwhelmed when I come back to see them because it's like visiting old friends. Sometimes they have been, they've spent a very happy winter and they're healthy and glad to see me. And sometimes um, it may have been a really hard winter and not so much. But I can say that this year, look at these Eugenias and how much they've grown. I, I can't believe these. These are absolutely incredible. And I was showing Susu, be careful, there's lots of things to trip on here. Okay. But look at all of these flower heads, which will hopefully translate into olives on these olive trees. And everything is kind of layered in here. So behind this, be, I've got some Silverado sage. Let's see if I can get around. Oh. Some yeah. of my, my dear, dear geraniums. Which, looking good. Which are looking good. And <laughs> a lot of these dragon wing slash angel wing begonias are also looking very happy. 
and in good form. Just, oh, look at these geraniums. I just always forget how much I love them, how much I love the scent. I should say pelargoniums, but how much I love their scent. Look at this elephant bush, Stuart. The question is, where am I gonna put all of these things? <laughs> at the new cottage. And I've got some more boxwoods back there. Now, one of the reasons that I'm here is because I thought I remembered that I'm getting ready to do a QVC segment on these wonderful egg obelisks. I mentioned them the other day. They're in, I think so many people went to buy them that they're out of the copper now, but they're still black and galvanized left. So if you want some, we'll put a link below, but you're gonna to wanna to scurry to get them, particularly if you want them in multiples, and I typically use them in multiples. So I, I knew because I had video from the past that I'd use them on some boxwood. So we're gonna to try to excavate those out of there. Um, look at this other Eugenia back there, Stuart, and how happy it is. And then I cannot believe how much this laurel Stuart, you may not even recognize it. I didn't at first. This is a laurel that I shopped my garden for. One of the tiny ones? One of the tiny ones. Look at how I big it I is. I think I remember what it was. Can you believe that? It's interesting how it has the same kind of shape as it did when it was, I think Mary, you limbed it up, right? But yes, but it's really, really happy. And wow. I think maybe underneath here are some babies of that. So I need to excavate those. And of course, what I want to do is just take them all home right now, but it's supposed to get down in the 20s tonight. Well, yeah, I could think of one reason that you came here today. What's that? You missed your plants. I did miss my plants. I mean, Jeez. it's like visiting old friends. I just, <laughs> I really miss them. And I hate to say it, but I forgot about some of them. I've got uh, Little Miss Figgies in here. I don't think anyone could blame you. Little Miss Figgies from the Southern Living Plant Collection. And I think I may know perhaps where one of these is going to live. And then back here, I was cool missing, these. I couldn't find them because everything oh, in here is kind of clustered together. Um, excuse me. <laughs> she says to the plant. I, I, says, I say to the plant, I, she says to the plant. Um, some of my bigger olive trees, someone was asking me about where they went. And some of here the bigger are. ones are back here. And... Don't you just love them, Stuart? Yeah. Don't you just gotta love them? And it's then in addition closer. to my darlings that are in here, Susu, you've got to smell the fragrance of some of these, of these flowers on the citrus that are in here. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely divine. And it also reminds me that, ooh, some of this foxtail fern is gonna be great in my front yard. And, and I know it's as, not yours, but that big guy over there sure is cool. Oh, isn't this unbelievable? This aloe. Stand these, next to it so we can get a Yeah, so you can get a size. Yeah, these are engraving <laughs> pots. And I believe these belong to some clients that overwinter in here and then go back into place. Now this would take a pretty a pretty grand porch or grand entrance. You could say that. For things of this grand stature. I mean, you got to kind of worry it might eat you on the way in. <laughs> or poke your eye out. <laughs> but it's, it's absolutely incredible, and I do, do love it so. This looks like it is a Harry Lauder's walking stick. In, I love the way that in branch kind of yes. wiggles back and forth. Yes. It's this is cool. a Contorta Black Locus. Okay, I am coveting that. And once again, I realized that my biggest thing is going to be to practice restraint at the cottage because I still have a lot of room, but I, I don't have quite as much as I had before. And on top of it, I'm really wanting things to not be too, too cluttered. Now I'm still cogitating about having a small greenhouse uh, and I'm still undecided about it. Okay, As you cogitating guys, means considering? Is considering, that, okay, thinking. Cool. I like it. I learn new words. You, you learn new words. Um, but it's just, I go back and forth and back and forth. And if, if any of you who have followed my channel, you know this about me, that, that to me, 
decision making is a very free form exercise because I will think almost 100%, 100% I know what I'm going to do and then I'll get new information or I'll live there a little bit longer and then I'll change my mind and I think I think that's a mark of good character and wisdom to be willing to change your mind after new new information comes in. Absolutely. It's I'm the whole creative process, really. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that anyway. <laughs> so, Stuart, you, I think, are going to have to get out from behind the camera. I just, I, I just love these begonias. They're, and they love, they even love Oklahoma, so they are true stalwarts of the garden. Here's another one of those wonderful Miss Biggies. There's been a slight delay in our getting all of the Southern Living Plants and, and Miss Biggie is in, their, um, is in the edible portion of their Southern Living Collection. I think it's gonna have to be until the first part of April because we're working around the weather right now, Stuart. And we've gotta take that into consideration, not just on our end, but on their end too. Mm -hmm. But it will be a happy day when it arrives. So Stuart, are you ready to um, step from behind the camera and, and, and help me plants. lug a few of these things. And by the way, it's hard to move plants in my little tiny Fiat dot. So Stuart helps me in that account too. Stuart is pretty much indispensable on many, many levels. Um, so on this very steamy, by the time you see this, it'll probably be on <laughs> Sunday, which will be my brother's birthday, my brother hey, Dave's birthday. Happy birthday, Dave. Um, but today it is St. Patrick's Day, and I had my green jacket on, but it's a little too steamy. And Stuart, somebody's going to pinch you because you don't have much green on. This is green and this blue. Okay. I don't know. And that, I got green in my shoes. Does that Boom. Ca Does that count, Susu? The shoes do. Okay. Well, all right, let's show you. Okay, Boom, I, made, I made a little more dramatic statement. Sorry for the green. On the, the, on the, the quick green. Swipe. On the green. <laughs> so, signing off for now before I melt, this is a good time to take a break. I've shared before that I had ordered some things for the cottage a while back and I'm still waiting on two of those things but I did receive one of the three major pieces of furniture that I was I was hoping would get here pretty soon and finally these arrived I love these um, these woven leather bar stools that's I don't know why that's hard for me to say <laughs> uh, these are not backless I decided to go with the back because they're a little bit more comfortable and I just love the way they look uh, hubs and I have eaten at the counter and we can testify to their comfort and I like the fact that they have a, a back so if little ones are sitting in them then that won't make me quite so nervous about them toppling over and I really like the way they look but come in here here because another one of the things that I'm waiting for is a settee, a Tangier 65 inch velvet settee from our house. And right here, Stuart, let's put a picture of the one that I have ordered. I'm waiting for it to arrive. I think it's supposed to get here this month. I'll have to ask John Terman to do a little uh, check on that, a status update on the tracking. And when that settee arrives, I'm going to move this chair that's in this corner right now to the other corner and at least this is how I envision it so far you guys know I always change my mind but it will be right here and I think what that will do is give a nice division between the kitchen and the parlor and make me feel as if they are distinctly two different rooms and even though I like the fact that this is open I also like the fact of some kind of like psychological wall that is is right here so over in this space, now I wish I was able to access in the basement 
all of my Easter decorations. I don't have a lot, but I have a few. And right now they were in the bowels of all of, of the storage shelves and the storage bins that are downstairs in the basement, which as I alluded to earlier, has just been waterproofed. So I'm having to be a little bit more creative with my Easter decorations. And this year I did buy a new one for the parlor and it is this sweet stone bunny planter. I saw this. A friend of mine had one. She actually got it at a shop someplace in Indiana, but I was able to find it online and I ordered myself one because I think it is so sweet. It even comes with its own saucer. You can see some of the packaging is still there. <laughs> and when I first saw it, I envisioned putting a small fern in here or more specifically, I envisioned putting a small, maybe four inch pot of moss, but I ended up putting this, oh, I don't know what kind of succulent it is, but it's got these kind of furry leaves that remind me of, me of bunny's ears. And I thought that seemed, Perfect. that seemed a little bit more appropriate. And then I just tucked some little clay eggs in there. And I think it's really sweet. I, I think it's sweet without being, as I've said earlier, not too cutesy, but I like the way it turned out. And then I had some of this seltzer that came in some packaging, which looks to me just like dried real grasses. And I tucked it around the perimeter. And as I was styling it, I thought, you know, there are so many options that we can use for Easter grass in our baskets and in our Easter decorating that aren't that kind of cheesy, uh, I don't even know, what is it made of, Stuart? Kind of like a vinyl or a, oh, some kind of that there. plastic grass that delighted us when we were kids, but, but now I just can see it ending up in a landfill. So there's different alternatives and happily a lot of them are free. So this was some packaging that I got. I, I want to say it came in a, a package, a box maybe of candles and it was protecting the candles. And then I got something in the mail the other day that was also glass and it had some of this lavender shredded paper, which I thought would also Wait, make- did you just say lavender? It, Yes, doesn't that Shredded. look lavender to oh, you? Oh, the color of it. I look white to me. Yeah, well, the color of it actually has a hint of lavender oh, to now, it. You can see it now. And I thought that <laughs> I thought that would make brilliant Easter grass. And isn't this Easter basket adorable? It's pretty, and pretty Linda. it was made by my sister in North Carolina, no less, from some of the things on her property, and she hand wove this, so it's especially dear to me. So this would be another type of Easter grass that is not quite so, oh, not, I don't know, not quite so cheap looking. And then of course you can do real grass and I've demonstrated how to do real grass before just by using an annual grass that you just plant in pots and you let it germinate and then you have real Easter grass. And then of course you can also get some kind of moss. You can get this at your craft store. If you are so lucky to have it growing in your own landscape, you can harvest some of it and it looks beautiful too. And then lastly, Stuart, let's move across the room over here. Um, I'm gonna put a link below to some of my favorite Easter finds this year. I typically always kind of go natural Easter instead of bright and colorful plasticky kind of Easter. And this Easter bowl follows in those same lines. So this is another type of packing material I got, and I love the way it looks. It looks kind of like straw. And then you can get these wooden eggs just very inexpensively from a number of different places. And then I got a gift from someone and it had this sweet, sweet little carrot that looks to me like it's just string that's been dyed and woven around a carrot form. At any rate, some of these, these products you can find online and I'll put them together with some of my other Easter favorites for this year. And then I've got them tucked into this bowl that was made out of some storm damaged tree trunks from my wonderful oak tree at the former house. So there's just a little bit of, of Easter decor and a few Easter tips and alternatives to Easter grass. Now I've got entertaining on the mind, Stuart, so let's go back to the kitchen island. 
Well, I love things that I consider to be inexpensive little daily niceties, just little things that lend a note of graciousness to your day-to-day -day life. And when I went to Trader Joe's, and by the way, I say Trader Joe's a lot, you could find these same kinds of things in a number of different places if you're just observant. But at the front, you know, they'll have these kind of point of purchase displays at the front of the store, and they had this inexpensive wine there. It's kind of a sparkling white wine. And of course, it was very inexpensive. It was $4.99. That's why it was at the front of the store, I think, because it was such a good deal. But what drew me to it was this absolutely glorious color of green. I loved the green color of the bottle. I loved the tall, slender shape of the bottle. So just like in the garden, I kind of a am attracted to things by line, shape, and form in addition to color. That's also how I tend to look at things indoors. So when I saw this, I immediately thought, well, I don't really care if the wine tastes good at all, but I love the bottle, I love the bottle, and I'm gonna get three of them because how delightful would it be out on my new patio, Stuart, if we're just, it's the middle of the day and I am, I just wanna serve cold water or I want to serve cold iced tea or something, that I serve it out of one of these beautiful green bottles on a green tray like this with some coordinating napkins. And then maybe I would still have a leftover because they might make it all the way to, to the summertime, Stuart these green carnations are lasting so long in this green reused candle container that I just took the label off of and repurposed it as a vase just as I did with this bottle of wine and by the way it wasn't such a bad bottle of wine so for just a very inexpensive amount of money and um, and the joy of drinking this bottle of wine I got something that I think will really make a statement and if you felt this Stuart you'll know that I keep one of these in my refrigerator <laughs> at all times time. So if I want, I, because I really, I never use plastic bottled water at my house and we have fortunately and happily, we have very good tasting water here out of the tap in Oklahoma City. So I just keep tap water in there. But I also think in the summertime, you're out working in your yard, you're really, really hot. How wonderful would it be to just grab a bottle of, of cool water that's maybe been infused with lemon balm or some kind of herb or lime or clement, wedges of clementine. I think it would just be really, really delicious. And again, just add kind of a note of graciousness to, you know, to your outdoor entertaining. And even if you're just entertaining yourself, I think it's kind of nice. And then I can also envision using it with some green glassware. Um, I also... I like that cup. I, uh, yeah, Fire don't you? Cup, is that what that is? This is just a, just a water glass. Hubs really likes these too. And the reason I like them is they've got this kind of bubbled motif. I got these when I was really hoping I could infuse more green into my home. But what's nice about it is it doesn't slip out of your hand yeah, it's got because it's highly textured. Um, and then I also, because I have so many girlfriends who love drinking champagne and sparkling wines, I also treated myself to get to getting some, um, some wine, uh, I sh should say champagne glasses for them. You can see I haven't even taken off the sticker yet. So just a few little things that were relatively inexpensive. Stuart's giving me the look. Okay, I've got, is, is my calyx just There's just one spot in the back. Uh, yeah, I, I have no control over my I know, calyx. I know, people saw it and they all wanted to tell you, hey, just fix that little spot. Well, and sometimes they blame you for it, Stuart. <laughs> they say, Stuart, you need to tell Linda that her hair is messing up. Well, it's up hard to decide it's... when to tell you, right? Like, well, because it's hard to know when stuff. my calyx are yeah. going to misbehave. Like, okay, before yeah. we get too much, <laughs> Before we get too carried away with my misbehaving hair, I want to show you another bottle trick. And I promise you we're not luscious around here. <laughs> but if I see a bottle that I just really love, the line and shape of it, then I'm inclined not to put it in the recycling bin, but to save it. And there's a particular kind of whiskey that my menfolk and I on occasion like to drink, especially in the winter time. And so I've been saving the bottles because I knew that they would just look wonderful. Three across the table outside, wouldn't that just look great, Stuart? Illuminating the, cool evening, the evening air. 
there. And I, again, I just love the shape of them. I just soak them in a bin of soapy water. It takes a while, actually. Use a little bit of Gooby Gone, and then I've got them. Uh, I've got them pretty much ready to go. Now, in the past, I have showed you these bottle inserts that can go into, well, they can go be stuck into almost anything. I've used them in flower arrangements. I've used them in potted plants. And I have heretofore used them even in bottles like this. But what I found was they just weren't very secure and I didn't like the look of that oh, steak. Yeah down into the opening of the jar. Does that disturb you, Stuart? Like is, no, but I can see how it might It might bother me. <laughs> so I found these online, and not only do I like them because they've got a certain kind of simple Scandinavian elegance to elegance to them, but I also like them because they fit in here very, very neatly, and I also like them because they've got a stake in the center. Uh -huh. So the candle does not go wobbly. And you can position it in the center and then you can just kind of adjust it until it is standing up and flying right just the way you want them to. And so I can anticipate outside on my patio or on my dining table outside in the summertime having three of these lined up. I could embellish these little candle holder rims, they kind of are like a, a babesh. And I could put greenery, little flowers around them. I could do something to make it a little bit more decorative. But I just really like the clean lines and the simple elegance of it. But then also, they just make a great empty bottle if you wanted to have something in That'd be another your- Another cool water jug. Another kind of cool <laughs> water jug. Yes, ab absolutely. But it would also be great if you like to make your own infused vinegars or infused oils, it would be beautiful as well. But, or, you know, you could even use some of these in your bathroom and you could put bath salts in these, you could put bath, bath oils, lotions, things like that in there. Um, bath salts is kind of what comes to mind, maybe some lavender infused salts that you make yourself. So that's just another one of these kind of daily little niceties that I think you can do rather inexpensively just by being, uh, just by being attentive and then thinking how you can multi-purpose something and use it in another way. Now, Stuart, do you think we finally need to go outside and reveal? Let's check it out. Reveal the patio. Let's do it. Well, Stuart, I think that you can see now that at least for my purposes and my preferences, I have more than enough space here on this patio yeah. for... Uh, for guests to arrive and come sit out here with me. I'll probably have a little bit larger table in the center. It's just going to be coffee table height. I'm not going to put a big dining table out here or anything. And I think there is enough room to really walk around because any plantings are going to be up against the house. So there is room to walk around whichever direction I'm coming from because the plantings will be outside the perimeter, the outline of where this stone and brick is. And boy, were people interested in seeing how this came together. Yeah, that might have been our most popular video. Pretty, pretty unbelievable. Some of you had asked, did I save some of the bricks that had writing on them from my other house? And yes, I did. Some of them are actually gonna be used in the back as well. The other thing that we saved were some of the bricks that were in the garage and that were um, original to the house or to the fence and they had extras of them. And that's these bricks here. So while most of them are set with a full profile, these were set on the vertical because the inside or the, the wide profile of these has holes in it. Ah. And so we I wanted the texture of this, but I also like the the kind of contrast between the two different sizes and the two different shapes. I really like the way that looks. I will like it even better as it ages over time, it gets dirtied up. I'll especially like it better when it's surrounded with all sorts of greenery. But I think it looks pretty great right now and it's a bit chilly today, but Stuart, when it was a little bit 
bit warmer a couple of days ago after it was finished I sat outside nice. and thoroughly enjoyed it and in fact after we worked out this morning my friend Lisa and I sat out here and we were still all you know we were still all hot from from being on the treadmill and lifting weights and so we came out here and it was very very pleasant now some of the pots that I got um, I didn't we didn't bring home a lot from from the greenhouse did we Stuart? Not a whole lot. But boy stuff was happy there and I can't wait to get some of those things home but there what were. What a piece of summertime in there. It, it was <laughs> it was it was it was let's say it was it was just warm and cozy yeah. in there a little too warm and cozy <laughs> but I brought home just a few things um, some of them are inside this is one of my my boxwood topiary with with a little upstart coming out of it and by the way if I wanted to transform this one ball topiary into a two ball topiary <laughs> bless you goodness <laughs> bless you it's always two are you it's always two I'm sometimes three but you just at least two well that's your lucky number but I but this is what I could do I could start it let it continue to grow tall and then pinch it out and then this section would start to grow wide and make another ball that always amazed me that that's true yeah, I, I just wouldn't expect. You I don't know, You think I don't know how it's done. Yeah. Well, I, I do wish this was this was in the center, but nevertheless, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But this guy was pretty happy and will be happy here, um, keeping the patio, keeping the patio company. Now the the concrete has been laid. You can see that now that it's dried, it's a little bit of a different color. There will be another coating on it and the porch that will be. Uh, much more closely aligned to the rest of the concrete that's in place. But I think it's starting to shape up nicely. You could say that. And I really like, <laughs> I, I, I like the way it looks. I am so, so anxious to get the plantings in place. Sadly, I, I thought that a lot of them were going to arrive on the 27th, but we've got a little bit of a, of a cold spell. And when plants are being shipped from cross country, like these Southern living plants are, it's not only just what is the weather here when they arrive, but what is the weather there when they ship. So that's a consideration, but I anticipate that we'll, we will start seeing them around the first part of April, which is okay because I've got lots of speaking engagements coming up, Stuart. I'm gonna be in Enid, Oklahoma, not too long from there. Now I'm gonna be talking to Impact Oklahoma. I've got numerous, numerous book clubs and garden clubs that I'll be continuing um, to visit with. So I'll have enough, I think, to keep me busy. I think so. I think so. So do you approve, <laughs> Stuart? Do you approve of the way it's, it's looking? Yes. And <laughs> I think this week we will begin to work on the window box. So there, there you go. There is the final patio, some little pleasantries to hopefully enhance the quality of your life. And I hope you guys get out and have a wonderful quality of life on this Sunday.